Now we talk about what causes um, the price elasticity to be elastic or inelastic. Okay, we talk about three factors. The first one is closeness of substitute. Now when you have substitutes and the substitutes are very close to this good, uh, consumer demand become more elastic because they have uh, choices and very good choices. Okay, so when you increase their price, they'll buy a lot less from you. Similarly, when uh, your price goes down, they will buy a lot more from you. Okay, so consumer respond by a big proportion versus the change in price because there is a presence of a strong substitutes. Now, when there's no substitute or poor substitutes, uh, consumer will not uh, really respond to the change in price because they don't have much of a choice. Okay, so that's what this factor means. Now, the second factor that affect um, price elasticity will be the proportion of income spent on the good. Now, we talk about this in class. The greater proportion of income spent on the good, the more elastic uh, will be uh, the demand for it. Okay, so when you spend, uh, on the other hand, when you spend a very little proportion of that good, you become very inelastic because you can't, you don't really care since it takes up so uh, less, so little of your income. Okay, so the greater proportion of your income spent on some good, you become more elastic. Now, we also mentioned in lecture that if um, there's price changes and if more time is given to you, you will research and um, uh, evaluate and consider what your options are. So uh, when you have more information, uh, you know that uh, you probably can buy something from somewhere else. You become more elastic because you have more choices. Okay, But if there's a change in the price and it happens very suddenly, uh, quite uh, possibly the consumer will just continue to buy. So when there's little time given to the consumer uh, in times of price changes, uh, the consumer uh, demand will tend to be more inelastic. They just continue to buy. Now we talk about uh, knowing the price elasticity of consumer. What will the what can the seller do to maximize revenue? Now uh, that will depend on whether the consumer are elastic or inelastic. Now to put everything into a simple perspective, when consumers are elastic, it means that they have plenty of choice. Consumers are empowered. Okay, when consumers demand is inelastic, that means they really need the product and they don't have much choice. Okay, so knowing that uh, sellers can make adjustment to their prices uh, to get uh, the maximum revenue that they can generate. Now we go through in lecture the strategies, uh, what uh, the seller should do when they know that consumer side is elastic or inelastic. We also explain um, uh, using the diagrams, okay, you should revise that. Now, when we evaluate the strategy um, um, in the summary, when demand side is elastic, that means consumers have plenty of choices, okay, they are empowered and um, they have lots of choices. So what the seller can do is to lower prices, to tempt them, okay, to buy. And because demand is elastic, consumer will buy a lot more, okay. And um, this quantity demanded will make up for uh, the drop in price and total revenue will rise. Okay, now when uh, consumers can't do without the good, okay, the, that means demand side is inelastic. What the seller can do is to increase price because the consumers have no choice but to continue buying or they can only uh, buy a little less. So overall total revenue will go up. Okay, now this part is very important because uh, in your project you also have to explain uh, um, recommend what should your seller do when they know that the demand is elastic or inelastic okay so uh, repeat uh, elastic is when consumers have plenty of choices you lower price to tempt them they will buy a lot more when uh, the demand size is inelastic consumers don't have much of a choice you increase the price okay and they'll continue buying from you okay, since they don't have a choice or they will buy only very little uh, very uh, 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 lesser in a very little amount. So overall, you still gain. Okay, so you must uh, be you must uh, know what uh, strategy to take. Okay, uh, after knowing what um, elasticity that you face. Now, cross income elasticity um, 
uh, formulas that um, explain uh, what is the relationship between goods and what type of good is it. Now cross elasticity measures uh, the relationship between two goods. Now we mentioned that two goods can only be either substitutes or uh, complements. Now this is a formula for cross elasticity, EXY. You see that um, there's two goods uh, here, okay, good X and good Y. The formula, otherwise the formula is very similar to EP, okay. On top is percentage change in quantity demanded, below is percentage change in price. But take note, this is for two different goods. Uh, when the question uh, comes up, uh, we will tell you exactly which good uh, is a change in quantity demanded and which good has a change in price. Okay, so don't worry about that. But just remember, um, these are for two different goods when we're testing out the relationship. Okay. Now, uh, if uh, you obtain an answer that is uh, more than zero over here, these two goods are substitutes. Okay. If it's less than zero, these two goods are complements. Otherwise, if it's zero, unrelated. Okay, uh, you can find this table inside your notes. Now, lastly, we talk about income elasticity. Uh, income elasticity measures the type of good, normal or inferior. This is the formula. Okay. Now, on top is the same percentage change in quantity demanded for this good. Now, below is the factor of change, percentage change in income. Okay, we want to study whether the consumer buy more or less when their income changes. All right, this will tell us what type of good is it. Now, take note, um, goods relationship could be inferior or it can be normal. Now, we split normal good into two types, necessity and luxury. Okay, now we explain in the lecture People will buy more or less of that good, but the change will be small for necessity because they can't do without the good. They will buy more when they're richer, but buy a little bit more. Okay, or buy less when they are poorer, but buy a little bit less. Okay, the amount that they buy doesn't change a lot because it's a necessity. For normal good luxury, okay, normal luxury good, um, it is very different. Um, the change will be more than proportionately the change in income. Okay, um, consumer tends to buy uh, a lot more of luxury good when they are richer and buy a lot less when they are poorer. Okay, now this is the end of the summary uh, of um, elasticity. Now you must be very clear uh, what is measured by the various elasticities. Okay, of the three elasticities, uh, EP is the most complex and uh, it has a, a diagram. Okay, and it's uh, applied to uh, strategy um, on the seller's part. Okay, cross elasticities measure the uh, relationship between two goods, and income elasticity measures what type of good is it. Okay, you must be very clear which elasticity elasticities measure what. Okay, uh, I hope you can take some time to look at your tutorial questions. Uh, you'll be clearer there, and ask me any questions in class. Okay, see you next week.